Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.3 and Heatler Simulations AGS 37 Vigan Module. Welcome to tutorial 19, ELINT. ELINT, or Electronic Intelligence Gathering, is one of the mission types that the Vigan can partake in when equipped with the U-22A version of its ECM pod. This pod has a silent recording capability where it can record emissions of uh, enemy radar systems. These can then be analysed later. This gives you some extra and very interesting mission types that you can complete in the Vigan. Let's uh, jump into the cockpit. I have the same loadout that I had during the defensive systems um, tutorial that I've, I've published previously. So I have a U-22A modernised ECM pod on my right wing, and on the left I have the KB countermeasures pod. I'm also carrying a couple of sidewinders for self-defence, but we're not going to use those today. So, um, all we have to do is we, we basically fly around these emitters for a period of time with the, the jammer in the correct submode, and then we land the aircraft and put the master mode into standby. At this time, the aircraft's computer will decode all of the information from the jammer pod, and it will provide information in the kneeboard, uh, where it will... Uh, classify emitter types, when they were emitting, and even generate a, a rough polygon as to where they might be. It will also automatically generate custom data cartridges, which we can then load and use as part of a subsequent seed mission to destroy these emitters. Uh, so you get both of those capabilities, which is quite nice. Um, there are some external websites and programs which can be used for analysing this data as well. I won't cover those during the course of this video. We'll just cover uh, the capabilities built into the aircraft today. So, uh, let's get started. First thing we want to do is make sure that the aircraft is in, nah, well, not in standby, basically. It doesn't really matter what master mode is in, just not in standby. And then over on the ECM controls page, we want to make sure that the main mode on the left is in A, which is the standby mode. This means that the jammer will not emit. Uh, very important to note that while you're doing this type of mission, you don't have active jamming capability. Uh, and then the secondary mode selector needs to either, well, it needs to be in one of the settings G, H, J, or K. In mode G, it will do low sensitivity recording. In H or J, it does high sensitivity recording. And in K, it will interleave low and high sensitivity scans. I think for most cases, you're going to want it in K. That's going to give you the most complete data set. Uh, also, for this purpose, you want to make sure that your RWR is on, either in lights or lights and audio mode. I'm going to have it in lights and audio. And then over here, this control here, Ludstrika uh, Ukdemp, whatever that means, <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn this up because this is my volume for my RWR. Uh, after that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to fly my flight plan. I've made four waypoints numbered one, two, three, and four. Uh, and these are taking me around the island of Cyprus. I placed uh, a few emitters on the island, and um, after kind of doing a few laps of this, I'll land the aircraft, pop the computer into standby, and then we'll take a little look at the output. You can rejoin me at that time. Okay, so we've returned to our airbase here on Cyprus after completing our little bit of ELINT. Uh, intelligence gathering. Let's uh, flick our kneeboard over to the ELIN page. We'll see that just now it is completely blank. However, if I go down to here and I put the master mode into standby, after a very short delay, you'll see that we now have information appearing in the kneeboard about the emitters that we detected during the course of our mission. So uh, we can see that we have uh, frequency A PRF 800 uh, when we first detected it, when we last detected it, uh, we can see that, you know, kind of broadcast time, silent time in between each uh, scan. And then we have some coordinates for a northwestern uh, corner of a box and a southeastern corner of a box. And if we plot this on the map, uh, we should be able to figure out um, where this emitter roughly is. And then we have a second one here as well. Same deal again. So uh, what we can do is we can first identify these based on their, their PRF, uh, their, their frequency that they emit. Uh, in, in combination with broadcast time versus silent time, uh, and then we can plot these on the F10 map as well uh, to get a feel for exactly 
well, not exactly, but roughly where these emitters might be. Uh, I'll do that in just a moment and demonstrate that. Uh, but before I do that, if we go back a couple of pages in the kneeboard here, we'll see that we have the, um, the, the data cartridge, the currently selected data cartridge, and we can cycle through these uh, and we will find that we have some custom ones now. Okay, I've actually relocated the aircraft to the ramp and we're going to continue with this. Um, so I, I took these coordinates uh, that I had in the ELINT page on the kneeboard. I plotted them on the F10 map. Uh, you can see that they're fairly accurate, but they're never exactly on. Uh, so this is the number one emitter that we picked up. Uh, it's actually, it's supposed to be an SA11, uh, but it's actually appearing much closer to the SA5 uh, site that I had here. I don't know if the, the pod got confused. Uh, but if you were to patrol this area, you'd probably find it. Uh, the ships, however, um, I think because the range of angles at which we flew around them was way more accurate. So you can see that these ships uh, have actually uh, given us a very, very accurate ELINT location. So now if we wanted to make use of those, we can bring up our kneeboard and we can go back to the, uh, the ground crew settings page and control shift and the letter C will allow us to cycle through these and we're interested in the ELINT cartridges. So if we keep uh, paging through, we eventually get to auto-generated search for ELINT number one. Uh, this is an auto-generated mission. You'll search for a radar transmitter that has been discovered in the previous mission. So this is the one that we thought was an SA-11. Uh, and it's given us a search area and a standoff distance that it recommends. So let's go and have a little look here. Uh, we're going to pull out the old cartridge and put in the new one. You actually don't need to do that, but I, I like to do it just as a, a matter of course. Uh, and if I focus down on the CK-37, go to Ref Lola and input, as usual, we enter the code 9er, 0, 9er, 9er, and LS. You'll see the 9 is flashing take a bit of time and there the, the the cartridge is now loaded and we now have a set of uh, mission waypoints so if I go back to actual position and output I can select B1, B2, B3, B4, B5 how many points has it given us? Uh, one to five so that that uh, mission is now loaded and we would be able to go and engage that target using that particular data cartridge uh, the PRFs and uh, emission and uh, weight times, by the way, that you get in the ELINT page, um, if you have a good table to look up, you can use those. It used to be possible to use the figures on vigintools.se. However, those are now out of date. There was an update to the Vigin, uh, and these are no longer accurate. So if you can find a good source for these PRFs, you can even identify the emitter type. And that's the whole system. It basically, you know, fly around where you know there are some emitters, uh, put your pod in mode A and K, that's what I'd recommend, although G, H and J would also work. Uh, and then after you've flown your mission, land your aircraft, set the system into standby, uh, and you will then have an ELINT kneeboard page with details and auto-generated mission cartridges. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. It's a really big help to me and to the channel. You also have the option of further supporting the, the channel by joining Deep Hacks Ground Crew for a small monthly fee by clicking the join button below. Thank you very much, those of you who've already done so. Your names are appearing on screen now. Uh, there are some small benefits, other than just knowing that you're supporting me in creating this content. Uh, you get to join Deep Hacks Ground Crew Discord, where we all interact with each other. And we also, on a kind of semi-regular basis, we do some flying uh, together as well in DCS. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.